Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's webinar on an introduction to TCP using NetSim. My name is Pranav Vishwanathan, and I am business manager at TEDCOS. And uh, today I'd like to welcome uh, Professor Venkatesh Ramayan and his team of uh, Krishna and Pavitra who are from uh, IIT Madras for this webinar. So they'll be this uh, webinar which would uh, uh, involve essentially TCP and uh, how TCP is run in NetSim. And uh, this should serve as a foundational course for those uh, people who are working on TCP and it follows uh, standard textbooks, what is taught in TCP in standard textbooks such as uh, Kurose and Ross. And a practical approach will be provided to teach these foundational networking concepts. Uh, with this introduction, I'd like to uh, call Professor Venkatesh Ravi, who will uh, continue with the rest of the webinar. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the seminar on uh, introduction to TCP using NetSim. Uh, this is Venkatesh Ramayan uh, from Electrical Engineering Department, IIT Madras, Chennai. Uh, with me are uh, Krishna Bharadwaj and Pavitra Krishnan. I would like to thank uh, NetSim, uh, the team, for this opportunity. The focus of this webinar is, uh, as mentioned, is a basic introduction to transport layer protocol, which is TCP. Uh, the outline of the webinar will be a um, small introduction to uh, the simulation software NetSim, which we will use for uh, studying TCP. Uh, basic introduction to transport layer protocols, TCP itself, and uh, uh, review of the key features of TCP, such as the three-way handshake, reliable communication, congestion control, and multiplexing. We'll conclude the talk with uh, suggested exercises and a list of good references. Uh, about NetSim, the simulation software that we are going to use, NetSim is a end-to-end, full-stack, packet level simulator and emulator that should permit to study network modeling, protocol modeling, and simulations. Uh, NetSim is currently having a large customer base and that should allow you to uh, uh, clarif uh, see clarifications or uh, see a lot of exercises. Uh, key highlights of the simulation software is, uh, it supports a lot of technologies and protocols like 5G, IoT, LTE, Wi-Fi, and a thousand plus nodes, uh, has a very good uh, graphical user interface and packet animator, which should uh, enable uh, a beginner to learn uh, networking protocols and standards very easily. In addition to it, it, has, it supports external interfacing with MATLAB, Wireshark, and so on. Uh, as I see, the utility of the simulation software is in network r and it's in academic projects, as well as to understand uh, public utility networks or defense and tactical communication networks. Uh, you should be familiar with NetSim now, uh, the configuration environment where you set up the network, how you run the simulation, the measurements and metrics, and uh, the animation module which allows you to visualize the simulation itself. Let me focus on the main topic of today's webinar, which is transport layer protocol. The transport layer is uh, lies in the uh, above the network layer and below the application layer in the ISO stack. The purpose of the transport layer is to provide end-to-end -end communication services to application processes and they do it by encapsulating the data messages with additional headers and they pass it to the lower network layers which are then forwarded to the destination by the network layer and the transport layer on the other end uh, looks at the header 
processes it and forwards our data appropriately to the application process. As illustrated figure, the transport layer operates end to end and not in the intermediate nodes. Key functions that are supported are reliable communication, congestion control, and multiplexing. Some popular protocols uh, are UDP, TCP, Quick. Our focus is on TCP, but uh, as a start, we will look at the most basic transport layer protocol, which is uh, user datagram protocol or UDP. The UDP uses the best effort connectionless service provided by the IP layer, the network layer, and provides the service to the application layer using the header that is highlighted here. The source port and the destination port essentially helps UDP to identify the process and multiplex the flows. The checksum allows for minimum error detection and the length field allows uh, the transport layer to identify the size of data that is data. The basic UDP provides basic functions such as a multiplexing and error detection and does not add anything more does not add more value than what typically the IP layer provides at the network layer. Popular applications such as SNMP, DNS, and NFS use UDP uh, largely because uh, UDP does not uh, need a lot of overheads either in terms of time or resources. That's an advantage of UDP. How many applications like file transfer would require reliable communication and so we turn to TCP, which is the focus of today's talk. TCP, unlike UDP, provides full duplex, that is two-way communication, a reliable and connection-oriented service on top of an unreliable best effort service provided by IP. So to provide these services, TCP requires much more than what UDP required. So the header of TCP is much larger than UDP. In addition to it, TCP requires buffer allocation at both the center and the receiver side and others uh, and needs to maintain other states and variables to support these functionalities. Key functions supported by TCP are, of course, reliability, congestion and flow control, multiplexing, and so on. Popular applications such as SMTP, Telnet, HTTP, and FTP use TCP. This is how TCP roughly acts. The application layer writes the data to the TCP through a socket, and the TCP stores this data in a buffer at the send buffer. Rather than sending the file completely, it fragments the data into segments, and then attaches the header, and then forwards this data to the network layer and towards the destination. At the destination side, these packets are again stored in a buffer. This is the receive buffer before they are arranged in order, and finally they are forwarded through the socket to the higher layer. The entire process, collecting the data, storing it, uh, breaking into segments, and attaching the header, ensures that TCP can provide reliable communication. And the rate at which the data is sent is managed by additional state machines and variables, which is essentially the topic of congestion and flow control. So the goal of this webinar is to understand the various aspects associated with this uh, protocol TCP. Essentially, the connection-oriented service, which is the TCP establishes a connection before data communication. And during this connection establishment, the sender and the receiver allocate buffers and they initialize state variables so that reliable communication can be enabled. So a connection is unlike UDP, a connection is established, and this connection is done using a three-way handshake using special control packets, or essentially using certain specific fields in the TCP header. Reliable communication is achieved first by two segments, and then using sequence numbers, acknowledgements, timeout, and retransmission. Using a good set of practices, TCP delivers packets without error and also in order. 
TCP also concerns about the rate at which packets are sent into the network. A key functionality of TCP is to perform end-to-end -end congestion control without any support from the network layer. The congestion is often inferred using packet loss and delay in acknowledgement and the congestion control algorithm paces the traffic. Finally, the port numbers and IP addresses are used to multiplex multiple flows to applications. The congestion control algorithm which paces the traffic also governs how network resources are shared by the TCP flows. The focus of today's webinar will be on how network resources are shared in the network and not in a node. We have designed four basic experiments to understand the key functionalities, the three-way handshake, that connection and tear it down, how reliable communication is done using TCP, the congestion control algorithm which paces the network traffic, and finally, how network resources are shared across flows. We'll start these experiments, and I would like to note that many of these experiments are based on uh, the experiments in the experiment manual, which I have highlighted at the top. The first experiment is connection establishment and teardown. In this, we will focus on the three handshakes used to establish connection and tear it down and the control packet or header that is used for the connection establishment. So to study this, we take the simplest network that is possible, which is a client and a server connected by a router. And we consider again a simple network setup, which is a lossless link. For understanding the connection establishment, we create an FTP application, which uses TCP for file transfer. And we will simulate this to appreciate connection establishment and TI. As a start, this is roughly how TCP does a connection establishment and connection teardown. Look at the figure in the left. When the client is, suppose the client is initiating a connection. So there is a connection request from a packet from the client to the server. Essentially, this is a TCP packet with the header field sin carrying the value one. Let me go back a few slides. So if you look at the TCP header, there are uh, these fields, one bit fields, sin, fin, and there is an ac, and there are sequence number and acknowledgement number. So kindly appreciate these fields. There is sin, there is fin, there is ac, sequence number and acknowledgement number. 